Hello again. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about functions. Now, functions are, uh, again, a very important part of programming. Uh, it's in every programming language. And essentially what a function is, is a set amount of code that you can run over and over and over without having to copy and paste it over and over again. This falls in line with DRY, which uh, is, is the dry methodology of don't repeat yourself. So whenever you're writing code, try not to repeat the exact same code over and over again. If you ever have to repeat the same code, it should go into a function. But a function can also take parameters or arguments. And basically what it does is you input information and it spits out a little bit of information. So let's take a look at a quick sample function. A sample function always starts with the word function, and that's how JavaScript knows exactly what this is. And then you give it a name, and you can name it pretty much anything. Uh, stick with the same naming conventions as uh, variables. Don't start with a number. Don't use dashes. Basically, anything else goes. So for this one, we're going to call it addition, and we're just going to add two numbers together. That's all we're going to do. So this looks a lot like an if-else statement where we have the uh, the parentheses, and then we have our curly brackets, and anything inside the curly brackets is part of the function. When we want to add numbers together, we can run this function over and over again. So whatever is in here is going to be able to run time and time again. Now, just because you have written a function does not mean it's going to run. It's registered in part of your application, but you actually need to give it a, you need to give JavaScript a command. You have to tell it, oh, go and run that particular function. So to do that, you just write the function name without the word function in front of it, give it the parentheses that it needs, and that tells JavaScript just with these parentheses that it's a function, and it will run it. So let's give this a shot here. Alert. Hello, I am a function. Now, when I open this page and I refresh it, uh, this this HTML here, by the way, is just from the previous lesson. Uh, we're just going to keep adding on to this uh, this HTML as the lesson goes on and on and on. Uh, anyway, so I refresh the page and it says, "Hello, I'm a function." I refresh the page. "Hello, I'm a function." But if I comment this code out and I refresh the page again, nothing happens. I'm refreshing over and over and over, and nothing is happening. That's because JavaScript knows that the function exists, but it also knows not to run it yet until it's told to do so. Now, this function as of right now is not very useful. Now, what if we wanted to run a certain set of code that just asks for somebody's name, just like in, in previous examples that we've done? Well, we can create variables inside of a function, say name is equal to, and let's prompt, what is your name? So all this is going to do is ask what your name is and say hello name. We've seen this before, but the difference is this time it's in a function. So I save, refresh. It says, what is your name? I'm going to put my name in there. Hello, Caleb. Nothing fancy, nothing we don't know about yet. The only difference is that we are essentially running this from one command. And if we wanted to run this over and over and over again, we could put this in other bits of code. We could say, if today is equal to, you know, Wednesday, you'd have to assign today to be whatever uh, the day actually is. In this case, it would just be WED, then addition, else addition. So now we're not writing these two lines of code in here twice. We're using just this one line twice. And so it creates this reference back to what the original set of code is supposed to do. And now you're not repeating yourself. There's no point typing the same thing over and over again if you can type it once and have it run the exact same way every single time. Now, carry on with this, with this example. Let's actually do some addition here. So let's do num1 is equal to 15. Num, uh, num2 is equal to, I don't know, 89. And alert num1 plus num2. 
Uh, and then let's get rid of this stuff. Save it. Refresh the page. Gives me 104. That's because it added 15 with 89 and just return that. Now, a function should not alert something in it. Uh, alert is generally actually just a bad practice. Uh, it's good for debugging, but really alerts are... It's an old school JavaScript thing that most developers don't use anymore. So let's say we wanted to put these two numbers, 15 and 89, added together into a variable. Well, how do we get the total, the 104 number that we saw, into a variable outside of the function? Because we can do total is equal to num1 plus num2. Awesome. What do we do with that? Well, let's try running this function, and then let's see what happens when we run alert total. Refresh the page, I get 104. Cool. What happens if I move this above the addition? Nothing is happening. I'm refreshing. Nothing is happening. Why is that? Well, if I open up my console, we have an error here. Total is not defined. Now, why is that? That's because JavaScript does not know that this exists. Even though total is right here, as of this point in time, it has not been declared. So again, JavaScript is aware of this function. It does not know the contents of it until it's run. So if we move this down, save, refresh the page, it gives us the number that we're looking for. But now what happens if we, uh, let's keep that there, add var in front of it, refresh the page, total is not defined. Even though it was defined a moment ago, it no longer is defined. Now, why is that? That's because var declares a variable inside of a scope. Now, scope is this concept that variables can only exist inside of certain areas. So if you have a, a function, any function with var, and then you have a variable, it can only ever be accessed inside of that function. So you might be thinking at this time, well, why the heck would I ever want that? Why wouldn't I want total to be accessible outside of this function after I run it? And that is a fair question. And the honest answer is, you don't want variables bleeding out of their scopes. Sometimes it's for security purposes. Sometimes it's for efficiency. Sometimes it's just to keep your code clean. But you do not want to use these outside of your functions. So if we're not supposed to use it this way, how the heck are we supposed to get total outside of the function? Well, this is where the beautiful return keyword comes in. We return total. So total has been declared here. It's the addition of num1 plus num2. We return that total. And if we run this on our page, we still get total is not defined. Now, why is that? Because what return does is it says, okay, I'm going to run this function and I'm going to return this as the definition of a variable. So if we have, and we've done this many times, uh, so if we did variable name is equal to John, we know that this is the value of the variable called John. But instead, what we can do is we can say, uh, let's actually just delete this whole thing. Let's go uh, variable total, or let's call it new total instead, is equal to addition. So instead of saying this is 104 as a string or an integer, or instead of saying uh, 15 plus 89, all we're saying is store whatever this function figures out the total to be in this variable. So now if we said alert new total, this will give us 104. So go back to the page, refresh 104 as we expected. Now inside of your function, you can run all the JavaScript in the world. Ideally, it should never leak outside of your function, though your function should be a contained specific set of instructions that you can use over and over again. But let's say we want to customize this. We want to customize num1 and num2. Well, every time we run this function, it's always going to be 15 and 89, respectively. That's not what we want. Functions are typically used best when they are extremely dynamic. And the only thing we want to do is we want to automate num1 plus num2. So instead of saying num1 and num2 are always the exact same numbers, instead we give them parameters or arguments. And all we do 
is we create a new variable inside of the parentheses separated by a comma and another new variable. Now this is the name. As you can see here, num2, num2, num1 matches num1. So let's go ahead and delete these because as soon as this function is run, it's going to create this variable inside of the function and it's only accessible inside of this function. So if we did different numbers this time, 10 and 15, we're saying run addition, the first number should be 10 and the second number should be 15. The function is then going to take num1, which is 10, num2, which is 15, total them together, return that into a new variable for us. And when we alert that new variable, we're going to get whatever the total is going to be. So I'm going to save that, refresh, and as soon as I refresh, this is going to alert with a number 25. Just like that. Now, why is that useful? Well, you can create a calculator. Well, I mean, it's a pretty basic calculator, but you can create a calculator that only has the addition function right now. But what if we wanted to add more? What if we wanted to do different addition? So instead of having to run uh, total is equal to num1 plus num2, or having to explicitly hard code numbers into our program or our application, we can now say any other number in the world. And what I'm going to do is instead of uh, alerting, I'm going to console log. So console log new total comma new total two. Save that. And I'm going to refresh the page and instead of the answer being alerted to the page, it's going to show up in the console. So I hit F5, and there we have 25 and 1,114. Now that's the addition of these two numbers and these two numbers. So now we have one function that's doing the same thing over and over again, completely honest with you. This, this course is not about sugarcoating things as you may have experienced already, but this function is honestly, it's nonsense. There's no reason that this function should really exist. But if you wanted to, you could make this function significantly more complex. You could take num1, you could multiply it by pi. You could take num2 and you could divide it by whatever itself is. You could take num2 and you could square root it by whatever number you want. Now you don't have to remember that formula anymore. Or if you have a specific math formula, right, so it's going to take num1 times basically pi, and then it's going to add num2 divided by 8. I cannot do that in my head. So I'm going to save that. And what happens when I refresh the page, it gives me a very accurate number. So now it's doing basic math for us. And by basic, I mean, multiplication, addition and division is still basic. But I've only ever written this formula once. I never have to remember it again. The only thing I should do is add comments around this function as to what exactly it's doing. So what I would like you to do for this lesson is I want you to create a new function. It does not have to be addition. It could be called whatever you like. You can have as many parameters as you like. It could be one parameter. It could be 30 parameters, although preferably don't do that. Maybe stick to a limit of like four parameters at max, just because it gets to be a lot to remember. Whatever you do inside of your function, and I don't really care what you do inside of your function, as long as you save it as a variable inside your function and return it. Or alternatively, you could take this and it's going to return the exact same number for you without storing it in a variable. I just did this for clarity. But I want you to return whatever it is your function is supposed to return and then throw it into two new variables and console log those out, just like I did with this video. In the next lesson, we're gonna create a couple other functions just as a demonstration because functions are so incredibly important. Uh, I want to make sure that this is really drilled into your brain because, again, this is something that you can take from JavaScript to every other programming language in the world. So go ahead, do that task real quick, and then uh, we'll do a couple examples, a couple more examples of functions in the next video.